Hi everybody, uh, today I just wanted to do a quick uh, little study of what's going on in Bangladesh. And uh, I started this uh, just last night and um, you know, I've been looking at the whole area uh, in general um, and uh, around the earth really. Uh, so I, I just brought up a couple of different things to kind of look at. Um, one of my favorite things to uh, look at is kind of uh, this... Uh, this this project here um, showing the imports and exports. So, in terms of exports, um, here we are with Bangladesh right here, um, and uh, they don't really export to uh, India, China. Um, they do export to the Philippines here. It looks like uh, Cambodia and Laos, and then there's a number of places in Africa here. Um, and uh, I would say of these, the really interesting ones, I mean, uh, essentially you can see Philippines is particularly interesting. Um, and uh, maybe there's a lot to learn there from uh, the companies that are exporting to the Philippines. Um, and then as well as exporting over here to uh, parts of Africa. And I would say, you know, this 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 part here is, is, is fairly uh, straightforward. But then deeper in Africa, how they export products would be interesting and you can see this little spot right here uh, exporting quite a bit there to uh, uh, this guy um, and um, uh, and, th and then in Europe right so you see not too much going on with Portugal there and then uh, Germany being kind of pretty heavy and uh, and then United States uh, actually being uh, pretty significant with three billion dollars of exports but actually Germany getting the bulk of this so uh, that would be particularly interesting um, to think about. Um, now, before we get into the import side, uh, you might want to look at this. So this is pretty astounding, right? I, I've almost never seen this before. And approximately the 100% of the economy is with uh, clothing and textiles, right? Um, and you can see... Uh, you know that's huge right so there there is some food that they're exporting here you can see um, and then a little sliver of bicycles and um, toys actually so um, and you got some uh, other things hydrogen peroxide and stuff uh, but uh, certainly uh, what I wanted to show you here also is a map of Bangladesh uh, so you can and it's kind of hard to figure out what exactly is going on in Bangladesh so let me transfer over to that image so if you're not familiar and the Sun is just shining on my screen here so it makes it difficult so we looked at the export and we noticed that there is some exports to the Philippines so basically this is Bangladesh and it's kind of a Actually, it's a surprisingly small country, um, and it's really hard to get the exact borders um, on a map clearly because it's kind of a, uh, when you look at it there, it's 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 really just a uh, kind of a piece in here. I, and I actually thought it went further back up into uh, this area, but actually India owns a lot of this land. Um, and... Um, and then Myanmar has a big piece here, Myanmar, Burma, out in this way. So, so really, they're really trapped in this pocket. The reason that I wanted to study this, and I think it would be helpful for a lot of people, is that when you look at the population map, um, so if you, if you look at this population map, there's just a ton of people here in Bangladesh. And let me just try to show you. So the interesting part is if you look at the rest of the world and you compare it to what's going on in India, um, there's just a lot of people there. And of course in Java here down in Indonesia. But when you look at it compared to uh, Europe and even the Middle East here, you know, here's Europe, you can see quite a number of people here, but Europe being uh, not a whole lot of people relative to what's going on here. So basically this is india right and bangladesh is the drain here for all of india so if you're studying population or just what's going on on earth in general uh in asia this is a very centralized location 
at the black marble here. So you can see the earth at night not really showing a whole lot of light there, uh, but uh, the population being huge. So how they get these population numbers, how accurate, I don't know. But you can kind of start to see that um, uh, this is probably even the border of Bangladesh and um, is really with that population line there. Um, and then this little part in here, I, I'm really confused on what's Bangladesh and what's India and why, how India got all this land out here, why Bangladesh is here, um, and what the... Uh, most importantly how do people survive like in asia like these days and um and and really for anyone that's really trying to understand the world um uh if you want to try to understand india you have to understand bangladesh and um because all the people are here and the river this is the river of india and it, it doesn't look like that important maybe on the map right now but it's uh it's really important. A lot of nice people like to live around the river, and that's where. Um, I mean, this is like, this is as important as the Nile, as important as the Mississippi. Probably more important, as important or more important than the Mississippi, in terms of population, and uh, or even the ri river in in Russia and and uh, Yangtze and Yellow River out here in China. So, and then there's the Mekong River, um, heading out here to. Um, um, this but it's just really visible river here right and these are like a river people here and you can see the roads kind of um and i actually my neighbor it happens to be from bangladesh and he just he seems really stressed about things and he really wants uh, some help and he's concerned he's here in america but studying working on his graduate degree um and um but it, it's just a whole kind of area right so not a whole lot of roads here i i left the road map on primarily because it's important to see how difficult this land is um you know the roads don't even go all the way to the water because it's a delta it's a drainage system and and it's kind of confusing uh in terms of what's going on so if you're not familiar with this part of the world uh calcutta so First of all, the, 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 the Himalayas are right back there, and it doesn't look very big, but these are the tallest mountains in the world on this. So this is a this is a pretty interesting perspective, right? So you see this pretty major drainage system here, and uh, from what I heard, India controls the flooding here. So sometimes they'll open it, sometimes they'll close it. They have some dams that they're hydroelectric working on, and it really affects the situation here. So what the my my presumption here is that the 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 land gets steeper and up in altitude, and there might even be like a little island here, of some sort that basically brings in Dukkha. So basically, Calcutta here is super important. So if you know the history of India, a lot of the revolution, uh, Gandhi and and whatnot started here in Calcutta, and then went across India over to Mumbai and Delhi. Um, and really, in, from my perspective from reading this, is that it was a mistake for Gandhi to leave Calcutta, but in order to change India, he had to cross the entire population kind of world, part of India. So by crossing India, he learned a lot, maybe going through this valley. He might have gone through New Delhi and then went through Mumbai and then eventually went back to New Delhi and died there, um, was killed, actually, So by his own people. Um, so... If he would have stayed in Calcutta, maybe things would have been different, um, but he would have also maybe lived. So, uh, but the revolution, the ideas, maybe it's just so complex because people, as they move up towards New Delhi, so the you actually make more make living in New Delhi because it's the capital. Then Mumbai is over here, which is pretty far. And then Lucknow and, and these other cities are, are pretty important to know about. But... Uh, and I left the airports on here so you can see the very important locations that you might be able to fly into internationally, right? And I don't even see a Dhaka airport. Where is it? Okay, there it is. So it's right near downtown. So some of these other airports show up as you zoom in. This is a very complicated land. This is their port city. If I were to zoom in here, you'd see a lot of boats kind of pulling in here. Why they don't are not able to get into Dhaka is an interesting point 
they must come here first and then bring their goods in through here so if there is export or import it's probably through this city here interestingly so uh and and at one time maybe calcutta was this but this is really this is really a, a very important city for bangladesh um you know it just it's super important for international relations because of um close proximity to myanmar um and um you know they just need land and they need natural resources it's a small slice here that defines a country essentially half the population of the united states and correct me if i'm wrong on that number but uh but there's just a ton of people in this small little area so um and um it's it, it, it and, and i don't know if i even if i even believe that number because uh it's just uh it's just really it's 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 a lot of people so um so let me switch back here i'm going to zoom out just to get a final view here and it's really uh i'll turn off the roads so you can just see the land landscape and you can see here now that um that this part is uh uh is 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 basically very i was talking with my friend and and and, and a lot of people kind of get trapped in in bangkok here right so if you're sailing along the water here or even migrating from city to city trying to find a better life you get trapped in bangkok or you basically end up down here in singapore and singapore is kind of the key but a lot of people get stuck in bangkok and there's actually a big pollution cloud here so it turns out that the biggest air quality problems in the world are actually right here right here and right in here in eastern china and this area is really serious and really huge and as we are aware of is that the problem in wuhan out in here somewhere on the yangtze river on the way to shanghai you know animals got sick people ate animals and now it's a it's a it's an international problem and um, so air pollution air quality so if we can get you know the it's not really it is bangladesh's problem a lot but this whole valley traps the air because the mountains are so high and it unfortunately this doesn't really explain what's going on there but you know and 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 so this whole thing you can get trapped here but if you can somehow make it through this tiny little thing this strait you can basically get to india so it's it's almost like a valve right so a lot of the indians over the history may have made it through this way or even along this island and then through this pocket but coming from asia this way is is is, is really a by land project and these are big mountains and jungle and um if you looked at the i'm going to change this this is actually pretty important to look at so this shows the climate so you can see that now this is this dark red is nothing like we're ready for this is serious jungle red is kind of like florida jungle and uh whatnot so uh but uh you can see that um there's some pretty high mountains and it gets freezing year round obviously up here in the himalayas um but uh, but so 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 the real the real thing about bangladesh here is is um is 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 dhaka right so we're gonna try to look here at, at everything in bangladesh and i might just uh cancel the whole thing here pretty soon but uh let me switch back and show you what we were looking at so if you're not familiar with this this is very important to know about is that bangladesh makes a huge amount of the world's clothing and uh from what i've seen you know in the uh, stores and you know look at tags and and at, at local places and um um this over time graph says it's only a small percentage of the world's clothing but i, I honestly do not believe this because it's taking a little too long to load but um let's look at imports really quick so on the import side you can see that first of all the main problem is this right so shows about 60 billion dollars of imports but only 30 billion dollars of exports that's a huge weight for the entire economy um if we were to look at the united states um let's just look at the united states really quick 
we'll see, you know, in the trillions here, but um, 900 or close to trillion. Um, but uh, so this is on export 700 billion, and then you see on the imports 1 trillion. So we're still not twice, right? So, but this is this, so this is a major problem, right? So Bangladesh um, is not sustainable in terms of imports and exports, they have a major problem on imports. So and surprisingly, quite a lot of that imports is just in clothing related fabrics and some other things like where, okay, they're making a lot of clothes there, but where do they, where are they getting the cotton? So, uh, and you can see they have a lot of insurance costs here and, um, uh, Chemistry. So this this is really part of chemistry here. This is maybe in for clothing, for dyes, and different things, right? So, and you you see that that uh, food is uh, is is needed here, right? So you see a pretty big, heavy slice, maybe uh, one one fifth, just to be careful about the number, is food. And each one of these sectors are about one tenth to one fifth, right? So to solve the problem in Bangladesh, we have to essentially get this balanced better, right, between exports and imports. And further, I, I think it's just such a complicated problem that we almost have to look at the import export map, right? So um, unfortunately, Bangladesh is very dependent on exporting their clothing essentially to uh, Germany here and these others and um, so how do you change a, an economy like this and um, that's uh, that's basically the question here so um, there is a couple of things so uh, there's this thing at the bottom of Wikipedia if you just go to Bangladesh you can see um, kind of the history geography politics economy and look at pretty much everything you have to click hide or unhide and you can get that there um and this is the currency and i was thinking of just doing a quick little study of their currency but i already know a little bit about the currency and it's basically so the the, the three currencies in the area to know about is the rupee um and then the bangladesh taka and then the uh, pakistan currency there right and then heading off into the middle east so those currencies and then myanmar of course so if we look at those three, that would be interesting. We can graph that and so on. So here you can kind of see the uh, financial district of what DACA looks like. So um, so you can see, uh, so they're um, kind of uh, uh, just some, some details about what's going on uh, in their economy. Um, and I think this was universities in Bangladesh. So you can kind of see... Um, I, I was going to help my friend out kind of from the university standpoint because he's working on his graduate degree and I just wanted to see what what's going on at the universities. Is it an education thing about what's going on there? They have a lot of schools here. I was very surprised. In fact, I was shocked at how many schools. So you can see um, agricultural universities, engineering, General universal universities, medical science and technologies, especially universities and um, off campus, and then it's got some pictures, and they all look great actually. So it looks pretty interesting, um, and it's it's great to see agricultural being a priority here, um, and uh, this is more on the education in Bangladesh. And I, I noticed this was kind of interesting just to see the letter grade system. So they really just give A pluses, A's, A minuses, and then they give B's at a 50 or F. And F is zero to, so I, I'm not sure what this really means. So it's just interesting to see how their, their grading system works differently than ours. Um, and then there's actually quite a lot of companies. So this list of companies of Bangladesh is pretty interesting. Um, you can see quite a number of them in Dhaka and um, you know just a ton of companies so this this would take a lot of time to go through so if you're interested in working with uh, Bangladesh pretty much this is a great starting point for specific projects so but during the discussion um, that I had with my friend this is a good you can kind of see the border here so you can kind of see it actually doesn't go off into here but uh, maybe there's some conflict and debate about 
actual borders. Um, but uh, India has a lot of power here, um, and uh, how and why and what's going on here in these regions is super important to Bangladesh. So, and keeping a steep stable debating this. So, does it help? Does it benefit India by having separate countries? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Um, and uh, in some ways, are they just trying to? Is Bangladesh trying to claim problems in order to stay away from having India take over their entire economy? So, and then here's um, Nepal and uh, Himalayas, kind of with uh, Mount Everest. And uh, but yeah, so that's super interesting to see. But um, I would definitely the kind of the, the state of the question that we got to is that so he's my friends in in America been working a lot on uh, water chemistry so he's basically a pretty advanced chemistry person in graduate school and now what do you do with your skills um, you know chemistry is super important uh, but uh, solving problems you know I mentioned hey like would you consider thinking about working on a water company um, he's more of like a teacher professor kind of guy path like he's you know worked on his graduate degree and maybe he wants to teach now or something but um, but it's hard, so it's hard to think about what your future might be like um, in your 20s or 30s. If you're a Bangladesh person, what do you do? Do you just work at a clothing factory? Do you find one of these companies to work for on this list? Um, how do you know what's good, what's not? Um, and uh, my personal feeling uh, is that this city is is got a lot of hope for uh, Bangladesh um, and um, it's kind of on the south there uh southeast of bangladesh Let's see if we can get a picture of what the city looks like so kind of see pretty rough if you look carefully at these buildings here um you can see pretty rough buildings um kind of smog and pollution related and even an empty building here on the sky rise so it's maybe like they built it maybe it's structurally has problems who knows um, but this is a huge building and, and it's empty so why Looks like they even filled the bottom floors, so they might just slowly start to, as they finance the project, be able to uh, start with these floors and work their way up. So, um, but uh, uh, but the smog is 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 really evident on the sides of these buildings, and I can even zoom in, and you can maybe see some details. Looks like a communications uh, building, maybe a radio television. Pretty nice looking building, but for some reason, no windows on that side. And um, just uh, kind of a, a, a view of what's going on in Bangladesh, kind of some dump area here. So this is the city that's closest to the water. Um, so it's it's kind of a um, port city, right? Um, and uh, a world, it says here, world's oldest port. So that's pretty important. Um, to think about um, and uh, you can see here's kind of the uh, state boundaries of this and then the city here this river kind of heading up here maybe they even dammed this to get electricity for the uh, uh, the, the port and the city itself so they may have lower cost because of that so uh, kind of nice just to see an old picture of the city maybe look at this really quick looks interesting um, and um but yeah so bangladesh here and the city and it's kind of nice to see the temperature right so you can see around uh, 70 80 degrees not too bad but once you get up above 75 80 so quite a lot of hot days in general and you can see average high being uh, 90 degrees that's getting to be sweating um, but uh, but still pretty warm and nice if you like that um, and um, you can see some of the foods and different things of the uh, sink so this relative size we're talking about 8 million versus about 3 million so this is the number two city um, in uh, Bangladesh um, IMF also has a uh, Bangladesh page I really like this little picture is kind of interesting just to see a little boater guy um, and um, uh, and then uh, the World Bank also has a lot of data for uh, Bangladesh as well. So, um, and um, this could be a resource, but uh, Wikipedia really has a lot of details. So, uh, let me pa pause this, think about some things, and I'll be right back. 
Hi everybody, so I just wanted to kind of hopefully conclude here with uh, looking at the currency of uh, Bangladesh. <clears throat> and this is over the last uh, 20 years. Um, and um, uh, we might be able to um, understand something here, I hope. Uh, so uh, on this uh, on this currency chart, um, there is... Uh, uh, well, uh, let's see if I can, uh, I can maybe even exit out of this. But so basically, what I did here is I looked at the uh, average true range over twelve months. Uh, but this is really the monthly average true range of the currency. So you can see um, that uh, it fluctuates approximately around sixty-five of uh, 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 on a typical month, um, it, it fluctuates about 65 of their um, currency, I believe. Um, let me just uh, check that here. So, so yeah, so basically each one of these little um, spaces here is basically one month. So you can see January, February, March, and so on. What I did is I tried to estimate... Um, certain significant areas based on the average, essentially based on the volatility of the currency, right? So this is a high volatility, this is a low volatility, low volatility, high and low. And I basically made the assumption that um, high volatility is bad, low volatility is good. So this direction is good for Bangladesh, this is bad, and this is good, and so on. So in general, um, that could be false too because you can have higher volatility and your currency could be increasing in value. So for example, here you have pretty high volatility, but you see this spike, but then again, it's still pretty high volatility, but it's going down again there too. So but in general, that's why I used volatility. Um, you can also use this one, which is the uh, price oscillator. This shows a certain different period. So you can see um, you know, the prices were probably going up, getting worse there and getting uh, better, significantly better here. So, and then this jump from here to here being uh, one of the best in the entire history. So really this point, which we didn't even discuss, um, was perhaps the most radical change in terms of finance uh, for the country in terms of at least this price oscillator. So from here to here, and then we could say the problem was around there. So if we were to look a bit February of 2012, we could try to decode what that problem is. So what I'm doing here is saying that in the last 20 years, this was the problem, right? It started perhaps around uh, 2008, which you could say is 2008 financial crisis was a global problem. But really, um, maybe around 2009 is actually when things started to slowly tick up. And I'm saying, but it could have been here too, because volatility was decreasing. And then suddenly at that point, it, de it started increasing. So somewhere between here and here, and we might just guess uh, May of 2010. So we can look up these specific dates. But right here, I want to focus on what the solution might be. So here um, is the biggest stretch of downward trend in their history right so that to me indicates where we would find the best solution at least in terms of currency right so if we look at february 2012 so on this page list of years in bangladesh you can do this for any country and what we want to do is grab this date which is february 2012 and we want to go to february here and i'll just open this up and it's uh, loading for a second. So why it's loading, we'll go back and look at this here. So essentially what we're looking for is what happened if in um, January, February. January could have been the start of the solution. And then peak was kind of in February. So if we are to zoom in on that, we might be able to see a little bit more. Um, if I press play, this will kind of uh, work on this. But so... Back then, population 155 million people total, um, and which is essentially half the population in the United States. Um, you can see some uh, other things. So we want to look for February. Journalists. Okay, so interestingly, um, we got to uh, watch the first session of Bangladesh Premier League during the opening ceremony. So... 
we basically have a kind of a weird shift here, right? So we have a, a president of Bangladesh um, working on a project of some sort, um, and then a journalism uh, question. So one thing to think about about this solution, possible solution, is uh, looking into uh, uh, news, media, and reporting. So when you consider uh, what's going on in Bangladesh here, um, the river kind of flows down here, and then by this time, this kind of interesting solution is kind of thinking about the future of Bangladesh as how to solve the problems like we originally talked about in all of India. So as you flow down this river, the problems end in Bangladesh, and uh, maybe Bangladesh can kind of come up with a uh, unique solution there. Um, and uh, but going back to the map, the, the data and the, the specific times. So we, we basically looked at here, right? So that was here, and it kind of remained stable. And we could even say March was still pretty good. Um, so uh, very capsized. Um, so there's different problems discussed here. But uh, in general, it must have been uh, a busy time for uh, cargo. You can see cargo ships and... Um, different things uh, just troubles in general unfortunately but uh, but uh, this is one way to look at it so um, let's try to see what else we can find out um, that might have been good so another interesting time period is from November of 2017 which really we could say it was around May but uh, the volatility started to so basically it was still losing uh, value in the currency, right? So this this is the dollar. So one dollar gets you eighty five or so of their currency, and it was around seventy seventy five, and then it was even lower to around seventy back until about uh, August of uh, twenty ten. So right here we can see some momentum change. So it's although this is a lot of volatility. Um, the volatility started to decrease and then it went up again but then now from this point on the volatility is decreasing so although the prices went up the volatility at least the currency was stabilizing so something must have changed in november of 2017 so let's see if we can find that what that was um i'll load that up and then we'll take a moment um to load but um as you can see slightly larger population um GDP per capita, so you can see $1,400. That's really low. You know, we're kind of looking for something similar to Latin America, and this is 10 times cheaper, and um, people are not making much money. So you'd have to say the clothing industry needs to uh, really change here um, in specific if they want to make more money. They're just not being paid enough, um, which is a really bad problem for Bangladesh. So... On this uh, chart, what we're looking for here again is November of 2017. We want to kind of see surrounding November what happened October. So, um, so you can see some uh, stuff going on with Myanmar and some kind of like remember the currency was still devaluing around that time, and you can see September um, and uh, we're kind of starting to notice a pattern here around a lot of action around December. Um, I'm not sure about the monsoon season, and you can see Myanmar. So, in general, um, and this is what you might guess, is that, um, you know, with, with the proximity of Myanmar to Bangladesh, you know, in general, India, India does have some parts back into here, but, but really, Bangladesh is the discussion point between Myanmar they have this whole piece of land right in here and uh, it's really important to work with Myanmar because Myanmar has the gateway to the rest of even the, the type of look of the person changes once you get into Myanmar right like I've seen some videos of people crossing the border and heading over to uh, Myanmar from from India I believe it was but uh, and heading down I think to the capital or Rangoon I think it is down here as so you can see uh 
uh, this uh, other city here. So basically, if they can work a peaceful situation, um, they can probably stay independent from India. And um, but yet, you know, a lot of people say, well, why not? This is kind of reminds us a lot of uh, the uh, Iraq Kuwait situation, right? You have Iraq. Uh, this giant country and then a small country like Kuwait, but this is even much larger. This is actually much larger than Kuwait. Here um, is Bangladesh, but but basically uh, working together is the key. You don't necessarily saying whose country you're part of. It's nice to have different things and some similarities between the countries. So, but uh, but basically that was part of the solution. So part of the solution for uh, Dhaka might have been. At least from the uh, time frame here, what we're seeing is um, getting along with uh, Myanmar, right? So um, uh, you can see uh, cross border from Myanmar to uh, authorities attempt to cross, and then um, Muslims trying to uh, move around in the country. I mean, it's a small country. You'd want to check out other places and you have to have money and you have to have friends and and uh, you can see refugee situation here and um, different problems. But actually, uh, so ironically, uh, the solution was for Bangladesh people to try to leave the country and check out some other places and maybe bring some ideas back to Bangladesh and then also to help India kind of translate what that means um and uh, i would say myanmar is still probably big on this whole uh, th uh question but it's it's uh, not a lot of people in myanmar right so uh that may mean that people it's more desirable to live in bangladesh um in some ways um but yet is it really so now let's look at the bad side so what what really caused the problem and so Obviously, this was a huge increase in volatility. This is probably the worst, worst that we can see. Even this was pretty bad. This is clips up, which is terrible, right? So we, we question the entire currency just because of jumps like this, right? This smooth place, we kind of say, well, maybe there's something, but uh, but certainly there's a lot of volatility right in here. So in that region. This is also the heights of the problem. So, at, at war can make them realize, hey, we gotta really change something. So, the good times. So, so it's, it's it's kind of a debate, right? So we're looking for a flat point in this line here, and where volatility is low, the price oscillator is low, and things, and and also it's a debate because the currency is decreasing value here, right? So, this level again, probably two thousand eight. So it actually wasn't wasn't too bad 2008 it was bad but they didn't see a major f currency fluctuation there with at least with the dollar um and um some of that might be that they're directly pegged to the dollar right so and that could be some problems as well but you know maybe working with the local indian rupee and this is about the same value as the indian rupee so I don't know if I want to look at the specific where the specific problem is or even if I can tell where that is. I mean, we can just kind of guess at what the parts are that got better in terms of volatility and then the price. So this is a major price drop. This is a major price drop. And um, and so it's really at that point you could say that, that, that there was a problem in here somewhere. And like, why didn't prices just keep dropping? So they, they slowed down and they started to, uh, currency started to decrease in value again. So when it goes up, your currency is decreasing value. When it goes down, it's increasing in this particular graph. So, you know, at, at, at this point, um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's tough to say, but I would say this problem right in here is one that we can try to take a look at. So, uh, and it's also a solution, right? So you can see there's this upward frame here, but maybe we should just look at this one. So let's look at May. Let's look at consider this a problem because it was uh, everything was going better, and then something got worse here. So right around May of 2013. So let's, let's look at 2013 here. Open a new tab. And um, 
it's going to take a little bit to load, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, you know, and, and it's just, uh, um, so you can see, um, um, April maybe was part of this. So garment factory disaster, um, and, uh, unfortunately a lot of the news is just problems. So, so something happened in the currency. So, so basically when, when the, uh, so ironically there was a garment factory problem in this time frame, And, and at that point things got worse, right? So, so we already know, we already know that, uh, that from the data that we're seeing that, uh, the uh you know that that basically the uh the exports it's a huge part of their economy um right but but we we want to see on the import side because we're never going to find a solution unless we um are sustainable right and my personal feeling about this is that by working with northern so on the uh, minerals and resources uh there's a lot of like in the local rock shop in my town, we get some rocks from uh, this part of the world. And if you look at the map here, you know, it's just, there's a lot of really interesting, it's, it's hard to see, but let me see if I can, does the mountains, are the mountains messed up on this map? Do I got 3D mountains? I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not loading the, uh, it doesn't really show the extent. Let me pause this for a second. Okay, so I'm going to change the exaggeration here to three. It was at one, I think. So this is going to hopefully change it so you can see the mountains a little bit more. And this is exaggerated. So right here, what we're doing is looking at kind of the the head off from northern Bangladesh so you know essentially in different parts of the world minerals resources so Bangladesh is fairly heavily dependent I'm sorry I'm kind of looking with one eye here but let me let me get this off here so this uh you know this river kind of pulls off into here so in general, there's not much more that Bangladesh is going to try to get accomplished going this way. Um, so that's why they work a lot with Myanmar and even their port is over here. So these mountain ranges heading off into here, um, you know, in terms of natural resources and other things. So there is a mining map. I uh, can probably add. You might be able to see a couple mines in this area. So... And um, there is one, like, for example, here, right? But that's even an Indian Indian mine, right? So, but uh, as you zoom out, you can kind of see, all right, so there's uh, another Indian uh, mineral resources kind of thing, and then a bunch of them kind of over on this side. So this is all heading out into uh, maybe even Thailand, and you can see that there's, Oh, heck of a lot more even off as you head into China. So, but so the, the minerals isn't really a possibility there, but um, because it's basically they would have to haul it all the way back here. But honestly, um, the port may be an option because if they have to haul the things by train down to here, you're basically talking um, a whole different option. So, but getting through India could be complicated versus this is not many people. Then again, it's, it's, a, it's a big complicated thing. So, but uh, back in here is also natural wildlife. So it's very important not to uh, populate some of these areas because there's like, from what I understand, the rhinos and other wildlife, that's this is it. This is all that there is left in India. This is not, uh, this is populated, heavily populated areas. So there's nothing, um, but uh, let, let me post this. Uh, so I, I've been in contact. So there's just a ton. You, first of all, wherever you live around the world, with 150 million people in Bangladesh, that's half the size of the United States, and this is a very small place. There's a lot of people all around the world that are from Bangladesh, and so there's a professor at my town, and there's even a local Bangladesh restaurant, and 
a bunch of things that I discovered. And, um, you know, I, I was trying to see, you know, like what's going on. I, I talked with them and my friend, the professor guy, he said that he went back to uh, Bangladesh and um, has a kind of funny way of saying the name. But, uh, but uh, you know, I emailed him and he says he wants to work on some technology related work. Um, but, uh, you know, here he is in the United States teaching in the United States and, you know, kind of uh, struggling between uh, two different cultures and uh, figuring out how it can help his own country. And so I, I sent him an email of a couple things that I thought were interesting. And um, there's this UNHCR, and this is the human rights um, group, and they have a specific page for Bangladesh. I don't know if you can read this, but you can uh, certainly, hopefully if you can read that, you can take a look at this, and you can see... Um, there's almost a million refugees. That's one in every hundred or 150 people are a refugee in Bangladesh. Um, and uh, why this is, what's going on. And I'm not even sure um, what these spots are on the map. These might be local uh, refugee centers. Um, and you can see um, what their goals are with the UN refugee. There's also this project, which has the uh, World Food Program. So you should definitely be aware of this, wfp.org and bangladesh.pdf, and you might be able to uh, find this one. And uh, this I just love because it has a very um, interesting map from a standpoint of where p outsiders outside of Bangladesh are working on trying to solve problems in Bangladesh, right? So you can see um, emergency assistance locations, uh, protection, relief, and recovery operation. And then you have enhanced resilience and uh, school feeding centers and uh, improved uh, material for child nutrition. Um, so again, if you're only making a thousand dollars a year or two, or even two thousand dollars a year, divide that by three sixty five. I mean, how do you survive? You know, um, so you either have very cheap products. And how do you get cheap products? So one of the magical things about Bangladesh here is that these people are surviving on $1,000 a year and the average person. And you can see these are World Food Program's locations to specifically get involved with what they're doing. And it's hard because as you get further and further in here, getting into the water like a boat and food it's just very complicated. So with this World Food Program project, I mean, it, obviously you'd have to have a space in Dhaka. And then as you get further and further out, these people are almost refugees from India, right? And uh, coming in from, because India is off over here and uh, some different things. So you can see divisional boundaries between the districts of Bangladesh and uh, major rivers and oceans and different place so it's certainly the world food program is working on bangladesh and there's probably resources with these people to work on startups and helping make some money but the problem is that um you know okay so say you work on a project you double triple the salary quadruple you know probably most of the people working um and also the aging population here right it's a very young country but I wonder if uh, it, how these numbers are come up. Like you know, even if you're making ten thousand dollars a year, you know. And anyway, so you see some food and cash for work participants and uh, cash distribution in dollars. So this is a kind of an older paper, it looks like, but um, it has a lot of. Uh, in general, that map is very helpful. So you can probably look through the rest of this. There's a couple uh, numbers here. Um, and you can see uh, where contributions uh, to the program in Bangladesh. So these are contributions to people from other parts of the world. So you can see um, a lot of money coming from Japan here. Um, so there might be some options to uh, not only send money, but uh, work with um, 
uh, outsiders, right? So like for and and this can give some uh, keys about uh, uh, you know the uh, the trade data. So I, I think on the um, on this, you know, we have the imports. So uh, you can see Japan is importing. Um, they are buying a lot from Japan, right? And but they are not actually exporting anything to Japan. So it's interesting. Uh, that's one reason why you see a budget, maybe maybe from the government, right? They they see the import export. I'm, and and why why isn't China with if they're importing so they're importing so much from China right and they're importing so much from India and really China is is costing Bangladesh right um, and um, uh, but there, there's two ways to look at it right so I mean um, I mean can they just ra keep raising prices for cost of clothes in Germany and other factors so it's uh, it'll be interesting to think about so here you have a uh, relief uh, recovery operation assistance from Myanmar um, and uh, so it b basically it's intertwined with Myanmar and you can see uh, Australia and Canada being a, a pretty significant part here um, and uh, basically seeing this so uh, and uh, here is a specific uh, page of uh, UN uh, HCR. This is not World Food Program, but you got an email address, um, some addresses, um, and hours working operations. So these guys um, may be able to uh, be a possibility to work with, um, no matter what kind of project uh, you're trying to think about with uh, Bangladesh. And uh, here is another paper uh, from the World Health Organization. And uh, uh, it's a gigantic paper, but um, we can just scan through it really quick. And you can kind of see uh, some data here that they got um, from the World Health Organization. And uh, this might say different types of problems health-wise. And, um, so, and, and actually, this might be the biggest opportunity for, with 150 million people, um, you know, you hear a lot about... Um, these uh, problems in healthcare industry, uh, but uh, is there a solution um, in these high populated areas for fantastic healthcare um, and revolutionary ideas? Perhaps. Um, so uh, this paper looks okay. It doesn't look that great, uh, to be honest. But um, but it's something that the World Health Organization has. So they also have this specific page, which maybe is even better than the. Uh, country statistics so you just do uh, world health organization countries b bgd country profiles and then english and they have reports data repository <coughs> and some other things so from a technologically perspective like is there a solution in healthcare maybe um what like my friend uh the graduate student he's working on uh water purification processes and studying it here in america um, because it, it's important for him. He wants to see another country and work here. But, you know, being afraid, uh, going back to Bangladesh and even my other professor and the uh, multiple professors uh, here in America that I know that uh, one in physics and one in electrical engineering. Um, and they uh, they started a little restaurant here and people love it in town. But uh, they also, it was kind of funny because they started providing free food one day to local during the coronavirus start of the coronavirus they started giving out free food to everybody in town and there was lines and the newspaper reporters were there in our small town and um you know here it was the bangladesh people feeding the americans um and i think they, they were kind of sad about what was maybe going on in their own country and you know they wanted to help here and um but yet um how do we help out in bangladesh and and Perhaps the only solution here might be with um, healthcare and uh, thinking about um, um, rather than doing a remote. Um, my friend did say that they do have English a lot in the school systems in Bangladesh and, and throughout India, but his English isn't so great. Um, and um, my other professor friend almost looks like he's from Myanmar, uh, looking like kind of Asian, but. Um, 
uh, but this uh, this World Food Program. So so basically, we got a dilemma, right? So we have all these World Food Program locations here, here, here. Might be able to contact and find out, and these become international hubs because foreigners are able to come in and work in these locations. And you can see that it's pretty much right in through here and in here that they're having significant difficulties with uh, these, uh, I don't know what these ER locations are, but um, but this is where they work in 2013. So what's happening seven years later? Is this all gone and is it totally different? But the map is still relevant because these are locations, formal locations that we can, and would this, would, are, is it possible to convert these into hospitals? And how does a local hospital work on solving international problems and where is the money there um, for that. So, um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so um, I hope you've had fun uh, studying this with me, uh, Bangladesh, and uh, seeing about, uh, you know, essentially what, what it means to think about this area, trying to help and uh, learn about, um, a part of Earth uh, that uh, you know Earth is becoming smaller and smaller, and um, you know if we can't solve these problems and we can't work with helping this area, um, it, it it it's a big problem for all of India. You know, so I mean the solution is not just you know like one gigantic India the solution is there still needs people to be helped here and all throughout this area. Pollution is huge and um, economy and um, and uh, why why Asia is doing so much better um, is is a mystery, um, and it's um, uh, you know there's uh, just a, 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 a huge a huge uh, it's it's a planet you know we were on this planet so uh, um, you know like uh, here, here it is um, and uh, just uh, really far uh, even from Europe here. And um, as we go out um, into uh, the Great Pacific, we can start to see America. And I happen to live on the West Coast here, but it's just so far. But but yet, Japan starts to be close to the West Coast. A lot of Asians living on the West Coast. And um, <clears throat> if Japan's close, then, you know, most of uh, South Asia, Asia, Hong Kong starts to be close, and once Hong Kong is close, Thailand and and the rest of uh and you, and you, all of a sudden you're in Bangladesh, um, and um, uh, but uh, 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 but yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the study. Um, there's a lot to study. We we looked at this really small area, but it's astounding how many people live in the cross section of this area. So you know, with most of the world's population. Um, let me just turn on the population map one last time. And we looked at, at, at this spot right here and, and, uh, that, you know, there's just so many people in India in general, and that spot has half the population of the entire United States. And, um, if you look at, uh, if you look at that, if, if we can understand this area and we can work on that area, it, it, it solves a lot of problems for everyone. And, um, uh, certainly, it's it's primarily India centric, but um, uh, but it, it also gets into a cross cultural what what is known as Indo China, like India China, Indo China, and yeah. So anyway, I had fun. Uh, let me know what you think. If you got some ideas about specific things, um, the only last thing I would say is that uh, the list of companies in Bangladesh. It says list of companies in Bangladesh. Wikipedia is extremely helpful. Having some more details on that um, would be helpful, and uh, perhaps looking at the stock market in general um, and how that reflects on Bangladesh would be kind of another interesting thing. But um, but I was surprised at how important the healthcare concept was in this whole topic, um, and uh, certainly looking at that, and there may be a lot of money to be made, um, kind of solving the healthcare problem um, because. Uh, you know, but the question is how that translates to, to export and import. Um, so it's kind of a virtual economy at that point with healthcare. 
Um, but maybe there's band-aid manufacturers to uh, everything else that you can imagine for healthcare. So if they, um, even with robotic surgery, right? So, <laughs> um, but uh, starting with clothing manufacturers, right? So uh, how this all will happen in the next 10, 100, 1,000 years, there's a lot of people here. So um, anyway, there's a lot of people on Earth. So uh, anyway, I had fun. I hope you're uh, doing okay over there, wherever you are. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks, Chump. <laughs>